and we're here again. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello and welcome to part two of Paul plays through the Gloomhaven PC game app, Steam, early access, build, beta, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's late here in the UK. I've done two live streams today. I'm absolutely exhausted, but I'm buzzing. Uh, Paul is playing PC games. What is happening? Yeah, actually, I do play a few PC games. Um, in not in my spare time but as a sort of a wind down <laughs> sometimes um and i thought with the current situation i'm going to try and produce as much content as i can because a lot of people are stuck at home a lot of people can't leave the house or shouldn't be leaving the house so i'm going to be basically producing a lot of content at the moment i've done two live streams today of board games and tonight we're going to be doing part two of the gloomhaven now i did this last night uh where we played for two hours and we went through the first part of the adventure did three scenarios, leveled up my characters, and we're going to carry on today. Uh, so hopefully everything is working fine. Let me know if you can... Um, again, I've not got the sound on for the game, so I assume you can hear the game in the background. I really need to get new headphones. Is there sound going on? Right, I can hear sound here. Let me know if you can hear sound from the game, because I'm interested because I've been having some technical audio issues today. But anyway, hello, welcome. Let's dive, let's dive in. But yeah, let me know if you can hear the actual audio from the game. We're going to load an adventure. Uh, now, which one is it? It will be this one then. Um, is it this one? Well, I don't, I don't know because this one says that we've got nineteen items. I don't, I don't think we ever had nineteen items. Uh, no, this is when we finished playing last time. So this was. Uh, early hours of this morning, that's what we're going to load. Yeah, this this is definitely wrong. Venom Stone, I don't know what this is, but that's not me. <laughs> that's somebody else. I've got two level four characters. Um, oh, I tell you what, this is from when I played it previously. Yeah, I'm actually going to delete these. <clears throat> these are my auto saves. It says it was the 17th of March, 2020, but actually it's not. What it's done is it's updated the saves. So uh, this is my current party. This is what we're playing. So I have on the chart, no game sound. Right, I'm gonna try and fix this because there is definitely sound coming from the game. Um, so let's have a look. Gloomhaven, DirectX, send the sound. Oh, I don't actually have a choice. Interesting. Yeah, no, I can't. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to transmit system sound, which I had to turn off earlier on because we were getting feedback. System sound. Default speakers, I think that's right. Hopefully. Everything flashes and resets as it does, but hopefully you can hear the sound now. Um, yeah, let me know if you can hear the sound now. So we are back in Wayward because yesterday we basically went to Mistfell Cops. Uh, there isn't much sound at the moment. And then we went back to Wayward. Where are we going to go now? Shall we do another three scenario run? Wow. It means we're going to be here for another couple of hours. I, I don't think I can survive a couple of hours. But let's do it. Let's go this way. Let's go to the marches. Start the journey. So it's three scenarios long. The first scenario is going to be the Lost Catacombs, which is Cultist, Living Corpse and Bone Ranger. Let's travel there. Travel to the Lost Catacombs. Are we going to have an encounter on the way? No, no encounter on the way. Have I got my water? Damn. Okay, I'm going to have to wait for Vicky to go to bed and then I'll ask her to bring up my water. Um, right, so Lost Catacombs, off we go. I haven't customised my deck. I should have done that first. Hopefully it will let me customise my deck before the adventure starts. Let's see how we get on. I cannot wait for this to go to multiplayer. Right, round one. Yeah, that's a shame. I should have done my cards first because I've actually leveled up to level two and I've actually got some new cards in my deck which I forgot to select, oops, before playing. So we're playing this with level one cards because I'm an idiot. Um, so, right, let's have a look. What are we gonna do? Uh, now, we fought these last time. Living corpses, move slow, hit hard, cultist and a bone ranger. So, are they in a good position for me to do anything cool? Now, if I can stay out of the way of these for a bit, 
That's normally a good idea. Stay out of the way. Now, I do have some fancy equipment. Yes. This is good. So we could actually move forward. Oh, there's an obstacle. Oh, that's a shame, because the new card I put in destroyed an obstacle and did damage to everything next to it. Um, right. So. Let's have a look at what we're going to do. I might put the opposing strike on. I quite like that. How big is this dungeon? It is two rooms. Okay, so only small. So yeah, I do like the opposing strike. That means things are going to take damage back every time they hit me. Um, well, I could create some obstacles. That will slow things down a bit. But I'm not in the right position for that. Uh, do we want to do the massive boulder? Mm, things are not close enough together. Right. Let's do that and let's move four. So let's do the rumbling advance. I'll use the boots, so I move four, which will go me one, two, three, four. End next to the bone ranger, which is only a little weedy thing. But that's going to generate the nature, which will be good for next round. And then we're going to hit it. What we're we going to hit it with? Uh, should we just hit it with that. All that. All that. I think I'm just going to hit it with the... Yeah, let's hit it with the opposing strike. Right, meanwhile, the Tinkerer... Now, the Harmless Contraption was good for us yesterday, but... Attack 5 at range 2. Now, that's a, that's a, I don't want to be losing too many cards too early. I like the stun shot. If we go early, move and do a stun shot, that'll get rid of the... Um... Yeah, this stun shot is great. So we're just going to play that to move two and then do a stun shot. Right, there we go. So the cultist is going after the tinkerer and he's moving two and attacking one. Then the bone ranger is attacking at range if it's still there. Uh, and then the living corpse moves one. Right, so as long as I don't end up next to a living corpse or one away from it, I'm okay. So we're going to use this card to move two. And we're going to move to there. And then we're going to use the stun shot to stun the... Uh, st yeah, it's moving to an attacking one. So it can't actually hit me. Do I want to bother stunning it when it's not going to be able to attack me this turn? Or do we just stun the Bone Ranger? Because that is going to shoot. I mean, it's probably going to die. So, no, I'll, I'll, I'll stun the... I'll stun the cultist. Oh, I drew me minus two, so that's no damage. Tinkerer's go is over. Cultist's go. It's stunned, so it misses its go. Right, we are going to move four, but we're going to use the boots. So, yeah, I can move four. With me boots of striding. Uh, deal one damage to that. Generate nature. Ready for next turn. And then we do the opposing strike, and we just hit that. That's enough. Got rid of it. Then the Craghart's turn. So the living corpse is now move. That's, that's the noise the living corpse made, Isaac told me. And the other one doesn't move. Why doesn't it move? Why didn't that one move? I'm, I'm not sure this game has implemented the monster movement correctly, because surely it should have moved Somewhere. Yeah, it, it should have moved there. It's really odd. Let me know if I'm not understanding this correctly, but I think that living corpse should have moved. Right, so what is Mr. Savas doing now? Are we going to throw the massive boulder now? We'll throw it here and hit both of those. Um... Or do we want to move in and hit the cultist? We could do this attack too at range five. Oh, and I do have... I do have earth, so yeah, I could do that and I could immobilize it. That'd be quite good. 
Um, do I want to do that for move two? I think we do. I want to go early just in case. And I'm going to do Earth and Clod. Right, the Tinkerer. What's the Tinkerer going to do? Uh, attack two, range three, poison. Yeah, that's good. And generate nature ready for next turn. But we want to go after the Savas, which we will. Um, yeah, Matt's saying nobody can implement those rules correctly. Yes. <laughs> Does my head in. And to Isaac, it's dead easy because he's a genius. So you're like, it's like, oh yeah, he gets it. And the rest of us really struggle with it. Attack three, range three. No, yeah, we'll do the toxic bolt. We'll put some poison on it. Uh, and then we're probably just going to move two. So which card do I not want at the moment? Oh, I could use that to move four. Yeah, we'll move four and get in the corner. Okay, done. So living corpse is going... Cultist is going to summon the Living Bones, if it's still there. Crag Heart first. Do this to move to. Yeah. Move to, move to here. Then Earthen Clod, powered up by that. Oh, what the Living Corpse is doing? Move to, attack to. So actually, I do want to... Yeah, we need to immobilise this. So that it doesn't come and hit me. Attack two, plus one, three damage. That's fine. That is now immobilized. Craghart's turn is over. Yeah. Tinkerer's turn. Let's do an attack two, range three on this. Put poison on it. So I'll do two damage and poison. And then we're going to move four and we're going to run into the corner. There you go. Okay, that is the Tinkerer's turnover. Must remember the Tinkerer's got a cloak of invisibility. So that moves two. Yeah, that's right. Very slow. What is the cultist doing? The cultist is summoning the living bones and then taking two damage. Yeah, that's the round I should have stunned it. <laughs> um, okay, so Mr. Craghart. You want to. We want to throw the massive boulder now and we want to put it here because then it'll deal damage to things around it. So we want to go as early as possible, which will be this one. Now, this Living Bones has, it normally targets two things. Yeah, it's innate abilities, it targets two things. So that Living Bones is going to move there and then hit both of us. Um, what can I do to stop that happening? I could create a couple of obstacles. Or we could try and immobilize, or we could just try and kill it. I don't think we're going to be able to kill it. What can the Tinkerer do? Yeah, I could net shoot her. It's a bit of a waste. Flamethrower too early? Yeah, possibly too early. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm tempted by the massive boulder. But it all depends what the living corpse does. Let's go back to this. There's a, there's a weird sort of crackling noise. Every, when, I, when I switch between these two, yeah, there's a bit of a crackling noise. Don't know if you can hear it. Um, is the nature. There is nature. Oh, I can do attack three and push. So I can push it away. Let's do that. Yeah. So we're going to do that just to go as early as I can. And then we'll do the crater to try and push something away. The tinkerer is also going to go... Hmm. That immobilizes something and then runs away, but I'm not next to it. I think we're going to go early and do an attack three at range three. Oh! I could do the proximity mine. Now, that's interesting. If I do the proximity mine and put it here, will the living bone step onto it? I don't think it will. Um, so actually, I might do that. But I need to go early, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that to go early and then play the proximity mine. Okay, see what happens. So cultist is move one attack zero, so it's not attacking. 
and it'll blow up if it's killed. The Living Bones is actually just going to stand there and not attack, so we'll go with a change of plan. And they're both going before me. So, right, okay. Complete change of plan. Okay, so the Cultist is attacking. Okay, it was attacking with a value of zero. Right, so, the Tinkerer. What is the Tinkerer going to do? Because what we were going to do has changed. What's the Living Corpse is going to do? Move to and muddle an adjacent enemy. That's not too bad. Oh, muddle and immobilize. But at least they're not attacking. And I think if I do create the trap, I think this is going to step into it. Now that's a little bit of a waste. Um, oh, in fact, that's that's heal three at range three, which is no use whatsoever. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do it. So I'm just going to stay where I am, and I'm going to create a six damage trap. Yep, and that's that done. And then I'm going to move two and heal one to all adjacent allies. Which is... I'm not moving. And then I can heal the Crankheart, even though he's not damaged. Okay, sometimes you do have to just change your plans when... when things change. The Living Corpse move two, can't. This one moves two, stumbles onto the trap. Trap goes off. Dies. Tinker gets two XP. Right, now it's the Craghart's turn. So, what have we got? We have an attack three and push. Let's do that and let's push the Living Corpse away. It's probably going to kill it. Or do we want to push the Cultist away? Or do we want to push the skeleton away? We don't want to push the skeleton away because that's got shields this turn. Or do I do that? That'll generate nature for next turn. Which one's the biggest threat? I think the living corpus is the biggest threat, but it can't get to me. So I think I'm going to attack the skeleton, and I'm going to push it away. Oh, hang on, that's an attack of range three. Undo. Let's change my mind on that. I'm just going to attack it and immobilise it. So on here it would be an attack of two, because it's got a shield of one. That's fine. I'm drawing me double. So I was attacking it for three, six. Is that right? Yeah, I attacked with three, I drew me times two, so I hit it for five, which is exactly what I needed. Perfect. Perfect. Amundo. Um, and then we're not going to do the fancy ability, so we're just going to move to... And I think I'm just going to move one. Just going to get this gold here. Now, is the gold still worth two? Or is it worth more? It is worth... It's worth two gold. I think that's what that says over there. Two gold. Right. Next round. All depends what the living corpse does, but I think we can we can get rid of these quite easily. We have nature. I could use the dirt tornado to do attack two, range two. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm just going to go as early as I can and do a dirt tornado on both of those. And the tinkerer is probably going to... Don't need any of these yet. We'll do that. But again, we'll go early and we'll do an enhancement field. Again, I'm not spending too long thinking about the cards because I want the stream to go quick. Well, not quick, I just don't want it to go slow. Right, Cultist goes to go in first. That's a shame. Ouch! Okay, two damage. Tinkerer's turn. Okay, so, change of plan. Yeah, complete change of plan now. Let us immobilise the adjacent enemy which is that, and then I'm going to move to, and I might as well go and get the gold. And then attack three, range three, and I'm going to do it on the Lick Hawks. Dreaming minus one, that's enough. Tinker's turn is over, Craigheart. Now we were going to do the Dirt Tornado, and I still could. 
because it's probably worth it. It gets me an XP, but I probably want to move away first so I don't get a penalty. Oh, and there's some gold just lying around. So let's move over there and then we'll do the dirt tornado boosted by the nature. And it's going to be that. And we've drawn a zero. So that's it. That's all of the enemies in this room gotten ridden of. Pick up the goal, round five. I think we're going to do long rest before we go in. Do we need to? I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Um, yeah, let's not. Let's let's move a bit more. Um, I'm just going to play these two cards. Probably doesn't matter. And then the Tinkerer is just going to play. I mean, it does matter, because when I sh Yeah, it's, it's what card I lose. I don't think we're going to need the healing. Although the summon decoy is 2 XP. Sometimes it's worth just binning the cards for 2 XP, especially in a dungeon which is, which is short. In the actual board game, you don't have time for this, but in the computer game, there are some dungeons which are just two rooms. Um, and you, you have time to basically just, you know, ditch a load of cards for XP. So I'm just going to play those two. So who goes first? It is the Tinkerer. The Tinkerer moves to... Um, yeah, and just moves to here. And picks up gold. We're not going to attack. Graham is here in the evening. Hi Graham. Congratulations again on your Kalos victory. Um, what do we do? Well... There's no point moving one. I might as well do this and generate nature. Ready for nature. Oh, do we put the backup ammunition on? Yeah, let's put the backup ammunition on. That's fun. So I can then throw two massive folders away. So I'm going to create two obstacles on adjacent hexes. And I'll create one there. And I'll create one. Create two single hex obstacles in empty. Oh, you can't create there because you can't block off an area of the board. There you go. Is it going to be rocks? Yes, nice. <laughs> okay, and the crack heart's turn. Next round, round six. We're both going to long rest. We're in sync, which is good. So, crack heart's turn. Which card am I going to lose? I think I'm going to lose. Um, I'll lose the Dirt Tornado. Okay. End turn. And the Tinkerer is going to lose... I think I'm going to keep these cards. Yeah, we'll lose the... Yeah. Where's the Heal 3 one? Yeah, I think I'm going to lose that one. Okay, round seven. Here we go. So the back of ammunition is on. I'm going to move in and I'm going to throw two massive boulders, depending on what's in there. So I think I'm going to do rumbling advance followed by massive boulder, which is a favourite combo of mine. And meanwhile, the tinkerer is going to probably do the harmless contraption, just to gain, again to get the XP. Um, and probably just something to move that I don't need for anything else. Oh, I want all of this stuff. I think that one. Let's play that to move, and then the harmless contraption just for some XP. I'm kind of being a bit... not lazy, but I'm being a bit overconfident. I'm thinking, this will be fine. We're going to be alright. But I don't actually know. So, we're moving to and all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage because I'm going to boost it with the Boots of Striding. So there's two movement. Door opens and we see what's inside. Right, now then. More cultists, more skeletons. Where are the two boulders going to go? I think the two boulders are going to be on these two things here. So we're going to end up here. Oh, excuse me. Very tired. Massive boulder and it's going to be two of them because of my backup ammunition. So one's going to go there, the other one's going to go there. Confirm target. So the first one, plus one damage, so that's four, that's that gone. 
one damage spillover. And then the second one, attack one, doubled. Yes. That wasn't attack one, was it? No, that was attack three. I'm sure it came up with attack one. Anyway, nicely done. Don't want to do anything else? What's my helmet? Oh, during your turn, perform a heal one. Don't need to do that at all. Pick up some gold. Cultists, what are they doing? Moving. That was it. Right, the Tinkerer. So, we were going to move in. Let's have a look at what the Bone Archer is doing. It's just going to shoot lots of arrows. So it's going to shoot lots of arrows into the Cragheart. The Cragheart is going to hit, get hit lots. But that's fine. He can take it. So we'll move two. Clippy clop. And then we're going to summon a decoy. Because it gets me to the XP. Uh, we don't need to go invisible. So we end the turn. Uh, apparently, according to Paul, some comments on the stream seem to, th uh, on Steam, people are saying it's hard when only allowed two characters. You are allowed three characters, um, but I've chosen just to play two. So anyway, Cragheart has been shot for two damage. I'll take it. Shot again for three damage. Oh, I'll use the shield. Of course, I've got the shield. Take it. And that one didn't attack me because it was too far away. Right, next. Um, there's a nice chest over there. It's probably got 10 gold in it. If, if the other chests that I've come across have <laughs> any similarity, all chests seem to be the same at the moment. Um, okay, do we have nature? So that's good. I could have hit the cultist and immobilize it. Um, there's no point putting the retaliate on now because these aren't melee characters. Oh, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. Oh, but I'll take down. I'll do damage to things. I don't want to do damage to things. Uh, things are not near each other for that. Hmm. Let's have a look. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? We're on 11 health, so that's fine. I could do this move 5 and immobilise everything I move through. And I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I could do that. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to move five, and I'm going to end up one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to end up there. Do I then have a ranged attack? Oh, wait a minute. I've just seen this. Unstable upheaval. Let's do that instead. Yeah. And if I can get there, which I can, by using Rock Tunnel to jump... Okay, let's do that. So, unstable upheaval, followed by rock tunnel. I'm actually going to do them the other way around. So, the Craghart is going to end up here and do damage to all these three. The Tinkerer is going to do a... I mean, we, I just want to play cards for XP. Um, because, yeah, why not? I mean, i got this flamethrower, which is awesome. But I need to move into position. I could... I mean, Toxic Bolt, attack 5, range 2. Yeah, let's move and do the Toxic Bolt. Ink Bomb is move 4. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, Peter is here in the chat. What on earth is this? This is what it says on screen. Uh, this is the PC version of Gloomhaven. It is on early access now on Steam. Um, so it isn't a finished game. You can see down in the bottom left we have a version number. Um, but yeah, if you don't know the Gloomhaven game, most of this is probably not going to make sense to you. Um, it's based on the number one board game according to Board Game Geek. Right. So, Cragheart first. We are going to Rock Tunnel. We're going to move five and jump, and we're going to end up here. Right. Then we are going to activate. Oh, is that it? Yeah, skip movement. So we're done. So I got an XP for that. Then we're going to activate the nature on the unstable upheaval to target all enemies up to two hexes away. Which is... Hang on. Clear targets. 
there. Right, okay. So I'm attacking that for three, that for three, and that for three. Confirm attack. Boom. Ha! Ha <laughs> ha! Nicely done. All three dead. Makes it look easy. Right, so decoy runs over there. Meanwhile, we do a move four. What's the range of my attack? Oh, I've done this wrong, haven't I? Yeah, I was trying to do two bottom effects, which I can't do. So I'm going to move to there. And then I'm going to do attack two, range three, and poison. I hope this doesn't kill it. Because if it does, the round ends, uh, or the, the, the scenario ends, and I don't get the rest of the um, loot. What's he doing? What was that? Oh, he's healing. Then he's attacking. Yeah, we'll take the damage. We're fine. Right, round nine. Objective this turn. Get the chest. Possibly just get as much loot as I can, actually. Rather than trying to kill it quick. Yeah, just, just, let's just go and get some treasure. Is that treasure? Yeah, that's two gold. That's two gold. Do we have a loot card? We do have a loot card. So I might get in position this turn with a move to. It doesn't matter, let's play, let's play me slow cards. Um, yeah, I'll just play those. Uh, and then the Tinkerer, again, he's probably just going to move away. Um, I mean, I could get the chest and go invisible. Do we have any loot? We do, we have a loot too. Somewhere there, there's a loot too. Loot two and one XP. Yeah, so I'll do that next time. So this time, I am going to do a heal 5 at range 2, just to get the XP. And then I'm going to move away. Mm. Yep. Again, this is just milking it, because I've, e I've easily done this scenario. I don't know if the scenario... because I'm now level 2. So the scenario is still level 1, because I'm level 2. Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm slightly ahead of the curve at the moment. Right, Tinkerer's turn. What was it? It was... Uh, move. To here. Ready for the loot 2 next turn. And then do a heal 5 at range 2. Again, just to get 2 XP. Probably should have healed myself, actually. Tinkerer's go is over. No point going invisible. Uh, so the Tinker is going to get all of this gold. Um, the Cragheart really just needs to move three. Um, yeah, so I, I did this wrong. I should have played a move three card. Never mind. Let's just move two. Let's move to here. And let's attack. Nothing. Oh, Ella's here. Hi, Ella. Yes, it is a time sink. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, so Paul is saying in the comments, you can't use your third character until you beat the first boss. Yeah. So I was allowed to take a third character because in a pre when I played this previously, I have already beat the I have already defeated the first boss. So um, yeah, that's why it's allowing me to take three characters. Right, round ten. Let's do the Tinkerer first. Tinkerer is going to do a loot two and get all the loot. It's going to go early and do a loot two. Right, and the Cragheart is just going to do a loot one and then doesn't matter because I'm going to long rest. Yeah, I'm just wandering around picking up gold while the Bone Archer is shooting the decoy, which I guess is what, what the decoy is good at. Um, so here we go, loot two. It gets all of that. Come to Papa. Ten gold for the chest, obviously. And then all of the other stuff, which is another ten gold. Wow. Lots of gold. Um, uh, and yeah, we can't do that. Nothing, nothing's in range, so it's not going to let us do it. No. So I don't want to do that. I just want to do a normal attack, so I don't lose the card and skip the attack. 
Um, do I know I am the best? No, I'm not the best. Second best. I'm happy to be second best. Yeah. Right. Um, done. Quagheart. Oh, Ella's just sent me two Australian dollars. Thank you very much. I've enabled this super chat thing. <laughs> and I didn't know if it worked or not. I saw some other people doing it. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for the donation. Um, I haven't said yet what's happening with the donations, but um, I am giving the money to charity. So, there you go. You heard it here first. I will do an announcement at some point. Right, loot one. Pick up the gold, and then we'll just skip the... Skip the attack. We're not bothering with that. <sighs> okay, right. We've picked up all of the treasure that we have to pick up. We've got everything. Yeah, we picked up all of the treasure. So our objective now is to just... Um, yeah. Well, we might as well take a long rest. Have a lie down. Why not? Um... Yeah, we'll just we'll just let the um Or do we want to move in and do the flamethrower? Yeah, we'll move in and do the flamethrower. Come on, Mr. Tinkerer. Uh, would you enjoy the PC version if you've never played the board game? It's a very good question. It it depends what other games you like. I mean, you will see from watching this how it plays. And then hopefully you will be able to make a decision. Obviously, I'm not giving a full, full tutorial, so a lot of the stuff that's going on you probably won't follow. Now, I was going to do the flamethrower, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get in position. I thought I bought some boots. I'm pretty sure the Tinkerer bought some boots. I did. I forgot to put them on. I've left them at home. Oops. <laughs> Or have I used them and they were greyed out? No, I don't, I don't. I think I forgot to bring my boots with me. What an idiot. Now I can still hit it. I can still do move two. I just don't get the XP. That's fine. I'm not going to get it anyway. So I move two. And then the enhancement field. I think that's it. Yep, that's it. That's the Tinkerer's go. Craigheart gets a go, but it doesn't matter what the Craigheart does because... That is the end of the scenario. As soon as you've killed all the enemies, which is what the objective is, as you can see up here. So that's the end of the scenario. Scenario one down. Killed all the 11 enemies, got 11 out of the 12 loot. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get the loot from the last monster. So there we go. Uh, you're more of a PC gamer than a board gamer. Could I have hit with the flamethrower without moving? No, I couldn't. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It is a good question. I, I can guarantee you some people have bought this without playing the board game version. So, it's up to you. Now, before we go any further, let's do two things. We will put on the boots that I bought, and we're going to customise our decks. Because last time, previously, on Gloomhaven, we levelled up to level two. Uh, and I, I basically got this card. So I've, I've got a new card. I can't add it into my deck because... I am only allowed 11 cards. That never increases. Now, which card do I want to lose? Which one am I not using much? I'm kind of using most of them. And I definitely need to keep Avalanche if I'm going to put Explosive Punch in. So I can't lose that one. I think we're going to lose Crushing Grasp. It is one of my low initiative cards. But I'm going to lose that to put in Explosive Punch. I've also got these three cards as well. If I wanted to put these in, I could. They are spur for specific builds. Um, oh, Heaving Swing is quite good. You may push the target into hexes containing obstacles. But again, if I put that in, I'm going to lose something else. And the... Ooh. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it in, and let's experiment with a different build. The Tinker also got a new card, Stamina Booster. So again, there's a card I need to lose. Now, this Proximity Mine has actually been really good for me. That's got me a lot of XP, and it's killed a couple of monsters. 
The flamethrower can't seem to get it working, but I, I want to get in the right position to do it. The hook gun has been good for when they've got traps. So I'm probably going to keep that. The ink bomb is move four. I like that. That's been useful. All of this has been useful. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to replace it with that one. Okay, and do we want to put any of our X cards in? Uh, see, I'm kind of getting used to these now, and as soon as I lose these, that's not been very good for me. Attack three, range three. If I get rid of that and put that in. Ooh, create a two damage poison trap. That would be good with the hook gun. Hmm, but what do I lose? What do I lose? Let's lose the net shooter. I'm just going to experiment. Try different builds. Okay. We got all our equipment attached. Attached. Equipped. Yes, we have all of our equipment equipped. So we are ready to move on. Where are we going to go? Are we going to go to the putrid pit, which is more of the same monsters? This is one downside of this version of the game at the moment, is all the monsters are the same. We're coming across the same monsters each time. That is not going to be the case when the game is finally out because there's going to be a lot more different types of monsters available. Um, um, what is that? I love dungeon crawlers and the graphics on this seem immersed. Yes, yeah, it is good. Rules question. For the Tinkerer's ranged AoE, do you have to be able to select a monster in range or can you choose an empty hex? You have to choose a monster in range. It's the same with the, um, the massive boulders from the Cragheart. You can't just throw it at an empty hex and deal one damage to everything around it. Which is a shame. I think you should be able to. Um, it kind of makes sense, but you can't. You've got to aim at something. So, do we want to go to the Putrid Pit, which is more of the same, corpses, cultists, or the Shooting Gallery, which is archers, archers, and guards. Let's, let's go with the Putrid Pit. Let's stick with the same monsters as we've got. Off we go. Encounter on the way. No. Right, adventure time. I'm getting thirsty, so I'm gonna need... I might have to ask Vicky to get me some water. Uh, and she's probably gonna be going to bed in a minute. Right, anyway, where are we? Are we going in? Are we going in? Yes, we're going in. Right. Oh, now that is an elite living corpse. Big and nasty, he's wearing nicer clothes. And he's got axe in his head. So we have an elite living corpse, which is 10 health, and then uh, a normal cultist. So, what are we going to do? What's our plan? How many rooms are in this dungeon? Ooh, I can't see. Or can I see? Yeah, oh, okay, I thought that was a door. It's not a door. There's the door. So we have this room. We have a small room here. Uh, and then we have another room here. Can I ask you to get me a glass of water? Yeah, this is quite a big dungeon. Could I? Could you get me a glass of water when you get a minute? Thank you. Got a disgusting look. That was from the cat. Right, so, what are we doing? Uh, let's have a think. Let's have a look at the Tinkerer first. We need to stop this. This is going to hit heavy and very hard. Now, we could stun it. Oh, is this the door here? Oh, no, that's where we came in. I was getting excited then for a minute. So if I put a poison on it, yeah, we can do that. Oh, traps. There's two traps. Oh, there it is. Thank you. I did have water in here. Right. So, let's put these new cards in play. Create a poison, a two damage poison trap in an adjacent empty hex. Okay, so we can do that. And then we want to hit it with something. What do we want to hit it with? Uh, or do we do the proximity mine? Let's do the proximity mine. Yeah, let's do that, I mean, but we need to go early. We definitely need to go early, so we're going to go early. I don't know whether I need to go that early. That's fine. 
and then the proximity mine. And we're going to put a trap somewhere around here. Then the crag heart's going to go, and it's going to, we're going to be clever here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of obstacles. Where's my card that creates obstacles? Have I accidentally taken it out? There, create two single hex obstacles. So again, ah, no, I need to move first. Hmm. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? I need to train Loki to fetch water. Yes, I do. <laughs> Uh, is there a Mage Knight app? No, there isn't a Mage Knight app, but I've heard they're working on it. I've heard they are, and I think I've been contacted, actually. This rings a bell, actually. I need to follow this up. I think WizKid spoke to me a few months ago about it. Um, so, what are we going to do? See, we don't know what the Living Corpse is going to do. He's probably going to move one or two. Yeah, I want it to move and create obstacles, but I can't because the create obstacles is on the bottom part of the card. What are we going to do? Add plus one to all your ranged attacks this round. Ranged attack. That would be nice to push it away. Okay, let's do that. Let's do something that's going to create nature. Um, which is massive boulder, but it's out of range. But if I go late, it would have hopefully moved. Okay, yeah, let's just throw a massive boulder, and what was the next thing I was going to do? Can't remember now. Was it? Sorry about this. Just had a brain fade for a minute. I was going to do something, and then I forgot what I was going to do. This is the Ella situation of staring at the cards for 15 minutes. This is exactly what you were describing <laughs> earlier on today. Is a live stream of this game. Is just people. That's what I was going to do. Ne that's what I was going to do next turn. So I need to generate the nature, which was that. So this turn, I think. I think we're going to move. I just don't know where. Okay, I'm going to do that. Let's see what happens. So the Living Corpse is going early. That's 21. Right, it's moving two, and it's going to muddle and immobilise an adjacent enemy. Two is not enough. Oh no, two is enough to get to me, but it will trigger the trap on the way in. I can do the trap and then move away. <laughs> yes! So we'll create the trap here. There you go. Uh, yeah, who knew corpses were fast? <laughs> I didn't think they went on initiative 21. And then we're just going to move away. We're just going to move two. And if I move to here, I think that means it's going to trigger the trap and it's not going to get to me. Is that right? Where will it move? No, because it treats the trap as an obstacle. It's not going to trigger the trap. I need to pull it towards me next turn. So actually, I don't want to move at all. I don't... Right, this is, this is where I'm going to learn the rules. I think it treats that trap as an obstacle, so it will go round it, because there is a path around. Even though it's longer, I don't think it's going to move onto the trap. Let's see if I've got the rules right. I have the rules right, yeah. It, it will avoid the trap if it can. Now, if there was no other way round, and the trap was the only way it could ever get to me, it would trigger the trap. So, if... Oh, we've got the crag heart. Yeah, I'm planning the tinkerers next turn. So I could... Oh, here we go. I could create two obstacles next to me. And then it has to trigger the trap. Yeah, this might work. This is totally going to work. I'm going to create two obstacles there. Rocks out of the sky. 
Okay, where's the other one? Okay. Okay, no, that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work at all. It's only let me create one. I thought it was going to let me create two. But that would be blocking off a part of the map, which it, it's clever. It doesn't let you do that. And then Massive Boulder. How do you become an elite corpse? Is there an application process? What's the criteria? Yes. Um, yeah, we need to speak to Isaac about that. <laughs> the corpsiest corpse. We have competition map for your puns. End the Craghelt's turn. And that is it. Round two. What did the cultist do? Just wandered around aimlessly. Right. So, plan A didn't work, which was to create two obstacles here and force the living corpse onto that. But plan B is the tinkerer goes first with its hook gun and pulls pulls the living corpse towards me. So I need to go early and then use the hook gun. And that's hopefully going to kill the living corpse. Hopefully. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, what is the Cragheart going to do? We need a backup plan should that fail, which will probably just be to move and attack. Oh, oh, here's the good thing with this explosive punch shot. It's a move four. We don't have move fours normally in the deck, so that's pretty good. We move and then we blat. Blat, blat, blat. Where's my blatty card? Um, Probably got rid of it, haven't I? I could do the heaving swing. Could do the crater. I'm looking for something that will attack four. And I don't have anything. Oh, that'll work. So instead of the explosive punch, let's do the rumbling advance. Rumbling advance, I'll then move one, two, three, four, move there, deal a damage to it, and then hit it with. Hit it with, hit it with, where's the hit, where's the attack three? There. The heaving swing. There you go. Right. Okay, so the cultist is moving before the crag heart. So that might change plans a bit. Let's see what happens. First of all, the tinkerer. So we are going to do this first. Yeah, attack two at range three, and then we're going to pull it towards me. Do I want to boost the attack? No. This just needs to do one damage, which it has. And then we pull it onto the trap. <laughs> ah, nice. It's nice we can get rid of monsters that don't deal any damage to you whatsoever. And then we're going to move to. And we're just going to move on to the gold and get the gold. Done. Right, the cultist. Move two and attacks one. Okay, that's fine. One damage, we can take that. That's all right. And then we are going to uh, move two, but we're going to boost it with the boots of striding to move four. So one, two, three, four. Because after I move, everything next to me suffers a damage. Okay, and then I'm just going to attack it for three. See if this kills it. No, I drew me minus two. Uh, so I can push it one if I want to. I don't have to. I might do. Just want to see the graphics. Right, next round, round three. What's our plan? Do we want to go through the door with the, with the cultist still there? Let's have a look at what the tinkerer can do at this range. Uh, we could zap it. Yeah, we've, we've got a few zappy zappy cards. Uh, oh, this Volatile Concoction is actually a repeatable card. Hmm. Might just do the Toxic Bolt. Toxic Bolt, and I'm going to move. And then the Crag Heart. Are we going to go through the door? Well, this is only a small room. So we might go through the door. It is three away. Have I got a move three? I do. So if I do a move three and I go late, and then I do... Earth and Clod. Yeah. Okay. 
so I'm a cultist. I think he's going to bed, so I'm going to have to keep the uh, keep my voice down a bit now. Cultist is moving and attacking zero, and it's going first. That's a thing. nice. <laughs> it got its times two modifier on zero damage. So two times zero, as we all know, is zero. Right, so the Tinkerer, what were we doing? We were moving away using this to move to. And then we're using this. Oh, I dealt no damage. So it got its times two, which was useless, and I got my uh, I got my null, but it is poisoned. So that's the Tinkerer's go done. Cragheart's go. So the Cragheart was gonna move. I think let's still do it. It's a little bit of a risk because this is a big dungeon, but I'm going to do it. So we're going to move three. I'm going to open the door because you are on you are on a, a time limit as such because of the card system. Um, you know, every time you rest, you lose a card. So we have an elite cultist who's obviously been to cultist school, and we have a normal living corpse who hasn't been to school. And we are going to do this, and we are going to boost it up with nature to get an XP and we're going to immobilize it. Which one are we going to immobilize? Let's immobilize the cultist. Attack two, plus zero, two damage, immobilized, done, boom. Right, okay. What's happening next? Round four. So the cultist is poisoned. What are we going to do about the cultist? Do we we just stun it. <laughs> I mean, it's already it's already poisoned, so that stun shot might kill it. But I might just wander away for a bit and see what happens. We're not badly wounded yet, so we don't need to do anything about that. Uh, <laughs> what do we want to stun? Let's just have a look at the crag heart, because I'm thinking I might move back. If I stay where I am, I might get hit by the living corpse. But, do we have nature? We don't have nature. Can the tinker regenerate nature on its turn? No, right. So we can't do that plan. Okay, I think I've used all my good cards. I mean, Explosive Punch is nice, but it does... It is a burn card. So I'm probably just going to be using that for the move four. Uh, where's the next door? There is the next door. And this next room is quite big. It's one of these V-shaped rooms. Um, tricky. Tricky, tricky. Do I just want to run in? Is that, is that too risky? It probably is. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Let's have a setup turn. Let's go early, but move back, and then put backup ammunition on, ready for the next room. And the tinkerer. I don't know. I've got this, attack two, range three, target two, which is quite nice. It's my new card that I just put in. It's a, it's a level X card. But I need to move in position first. I mean, there is the flamethrower as well. Is it too early for the flamethrower? Is it, is, it, is it ever too early for a flamethrower? Um, I could bring the decoy out. So many choices in this game. Right, I'm going to go with that. And what was it I was going to do? Reviving Shock. New card that I've not used before. And I'm going to try and remember to re drink my potion. Right, let's see what happens. So, the elite cultist is moving and attacking. And if it dies, it blows up. And the living corpse is moving too. Right, well, at least it's not attacking. Two damage. 
Ouch. Should have got rid of it when I could. <laughs> right, Craighart, what was the plan? What were we doing? We were moving back. I think I need to move back. Cultists have already been, so I just need to move back one. I don't want to move back too far. And then we're going to, yeah, skip the rest of the movement. And then we're going to put the backup ammunition on. Ready for the future. Okay, right. Craighart's turn is over. Next. Living Corp moves to, but doesn't attack because there's nothing next to it. Okay, Tinkerers go. <coughs> uh, oh, I can actually attack things from where I am. I assume I've got line of sight. How do you check that you've got line of sight? I don't think you can. Okay, so I think I can attack from where I am, but I'm probably going to move two anyway. So I'm going to move two to here. A little risky. But I could always go invisible if I really wanted to. Uh, and then we're going to do this. So I can attack two things. So I'm going to attack that and that, and I'm going to use my minor power potion. Do I have to select that first? Yeah, I have to select it first. Then we're going to attack that and that. Now it's a bit overkill, but let's do it. Plus one, so I'm going to do that. Four, almost dead. This one, done it. That cultist is dead, the other one's on one health. Round five. So we need to get rid of the corpse. That's the biggest threat at the moment. Um, oh, it's wounded. How is it wounded? Has the Tinkerer got a card with wound in its deck? Yes, I do. And I drew it. Nice. Okay. Um, I assume the stream's going out. The chat's gone a bit quiet. I hope everybody's all right. We have 32 people watching. If you are watching, pop a message in the chat. Let us know what you think, let us know if you like the game, let us know what your favourite character class is and what you had for dinner. And other such important questions. So, that cultist, because it's got a wound on, is going to die at the start of its turn. There's nothing I need to do about it at all. It's just this corpse. Now, we can go first and stun it. Um, don't really want to do the flamethrower right now, that is a bit of a waste. So yeah, we'll go first and stun it. And then we'll... Oh. I'm not going to be able to move much. Let's heal. Yeah, let's heal myself. Right. Uh, Craghart. Oh, Gareth's here. Scoundrel and Beetroot. You had Beetroot for dinner? I do like Beetroot. I need to eat more Beetroot. Right, what are we going to do here? Are we any nature? No, nope, we don't have any nature. But this is attack three at range three. That should, that might be enough. Let's go early. Okay. Okay, so the cultist, the elite cultist, was going to summon a living bones. I don't know why it's got cultist elite and not elite cultist. Because in the board game, it's elite first. Anyway. We are going to stun the living cult, which was going to attack for three. Now it's not. And then I'm going to just heal myself. Because why not? And Matt had a chicken salad sandwich. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to need something to eat later on. Uh, Cragheart. Attack three, range three. Yeah. Hold oh, smash. That's three damage. That's all right. And we're going to just move two. Because I can't... I can't get anywhere. It's all getting a bit tight in this corridor. <laughs> and on the cultist go, it dies from the wound before it does anything. Bye-bye! And then the living corpse was stunned, so it didn't do anything either. Okay, right, it's the Craghart's turn. We have one card in hand, which means... We're going to have to long rest. I mean, I could short rest and have a go. Ooh, what do we do? Do I long rest or short rest? I think I'll short rest. Yeah, we'll do a short rest. So I lose a random card, which is the explosive punch. I don't want to lose my explosive punch. 
because it's a move four and this is a big dungeon but if I redraw and take a damage I might lose something else oh that's painful because I don't want to lose the massive boulder because I've got the um, I've got the backup ammunition active so I'm gonna lose it them's the brakes and then what are we gonna do well, let's have a look at the Tinkerer. What was the Tinkerer going to do? Tinkerer could just move four and get round and then long rest next turn. Yeah, if we can go early and attack something, we don't need to deal it much damage. Um, yeah, this, this should do it. Yeah, I got I got a few options here. So I'm going to play that to go early, and then yeah, crater. Hopefully that will do it on 13, and then the tinkerer is just going to go late. Because we might miss. Should have done it the other way around. Right, the living corpse is attacking five, so we don't want to be next to it. If this doesn't work we have a problem because the Tinkerer is going to get absolutely walloped. So we just need to make sure this works. Don't know how we do that. So we're going to move to. Hit the top. And then attack three, range three. Cross fingers. Don't get the miss. Oh yeah, easy. He dead. Fragheart's turn is over. Don't need to do any healing. Tinkerers go. Now, bear in mind we're going to long rest next turn. I think we're going to move to... And just go here. Yeah. Uh, JD is in the chat saying that your friends have a three-player party. Yeah, the Brute. You're playing the Brute. The Brute is interesting. It starts off as a fairly boring character. But actually, once you get going with it, it's pretty good. It can do some clever tricks with pushing and pulling and... Things like that. Right, room two is cleared. Pick up some gold. Uh, we have two rooms left. The next one's going to be a big one. So, we need to be going in and doing a massive boulder. And I need to be moving in as much as I can, which is three. So we'll go late and we'll do a double massive boulder. And the tinkerer is just going to long rest. Should have used the boots. Yeah. Okay, so uh, move three. First move is onto here. Right, now let's let's survey the situation now that we have seen what's in here. So this this massive boulder, this double massive boulder is awful. <laughs> We've got two more movement left. What are the corpses doing? Oh, they're not attacking this turn. That's good. The cultist is not going to be able to attack me this turn. So I'm just going to go here. And I can only throw one massive boulder, even though I've got backup ammunition. Does it use one of the backup ammunitions? Does it use one of them? This is a question. Because I can only fire one. I hope it won't use it. Gareth's gone to bed. Thank you, Gareth, for joining in. Uh, that is the Craghart's turn done. What did I get? Oh, I got me plus one. Loads of damage. Oh, and then he's going to die. Nice. I like it when the living corpses move and a bit falls off them. There you go. It moved and it's like fell off. And then the Tinkerer is long resting, so we're going to lose... Let's lose the Volatile Concoction. Okay, and the Tinkerer's turn. Round eight. Now I do have these. These are ranged attacks. And they immobilize as well. Range five. So if I move one, two, and then go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let's do that. So I am going to be doing Earthen Clod as the attack. And then as the movement... Ooh, actually, oh no, I need to move. 
let's let's just move with the avalanche now the tinkerer fully restored got all these cards back mostly we need to get in there we need to get in there quick so i mean i've got the boots which is good so i could do oh yeah let's do that let's move four plus the two and go one two three four five six six and then shoot two things am i in range to shoot two things not quite i could move i could use this to move six yeah let's do this this is fun oh i've used my potion ah it's all right yeah he's gonna get in there okay so the cultist is standing where it is and summoning a living bones and the living corpse is moving one attacking for four okay so tinkerer first insane amount of movement because we're going to move six and oh do we want to now that that now that that yeah no let's do it so move six plus the boots is move eight <laughs> look how far we can get we can go here let's go here run with your little legs okay and then can't use the potions because I've already used it. Attack two, range three, target two. So I'm attacking that and that. Nice. Eh, it's a bit of damage. Oh, it's a shame. Because that would have killed it. Now, do we want to go invisible? What is the corpse doing? It is moving. Uh, is the Kragheart going to kill it before that? Yes, I think it is. But we're going to go invisible anyway, because it's fun. Tinkerer has gone invisible. Right, now it's the Kragheart. So we're going to move. We're going to move two to here. Can't go any further. And then we are going to... Oh, there is nature as well. So we're going to power that card up. Do two attacks. One there, one there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm getting used to these characters now. Okay, so that dies. And as long as it's not the miss. Okay, so now it is the cultist's go. Yeah, cultist turn. Summons a living bone and then dies in the process. Um, so, round nine. We have a living bone to take care of. Are we bothered? Are we that bothered? Do we just go around smashing up obstacles? Because that's what he's good at. Yeah, I think we just do that. See what happens. And the Tinkerer, who is invisible, is going to stay invisible till the end of the Tinkerer's round. So what we might do is pop in the door. Summon a harmless contraption. Do a stun shot. What are we going to do? Toxic Bolt? Let's do a Toxic Bolt. Uh, yeah, if we go late and do a Toxic Bolt and see what happens. Not a Toxic Bolt. Um, where was it? Okay, maybe it's Toxic Bolt. I thought... Oh, no, that's the bottom part that I want to do. And then let's summon a decoy. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's start getting some XP, because there's only one room left now. So the Living Bones is standing where it is and healing. Brilliant. Not what we wanted at all. So the Kragheart destroys an adjacent obstacle, because he's bored. Smash. Gets an XP. Uh, and then just going to move to. Yeah, we'll just move to here. Or here. Or move to here. Okay, that's the Kragheart's turn done. So the Tinkerer. We were going to attack that and then summon a decoy. Is that what we want to do still? Or do we want to go in the room? It's only a small room. There's not going to be much in there. No, let's let's go with the original plan. So we're, Oh no, hang on. Undo. It's attack five at range two. It's not range two. It's range three. I could do the top bit. 
and then heal, but I don't need to heal. Let's have a look. Let's go in the room. Let, let's, let's take a bit of a risk. Do we go in the room and summon a decoy? Yeah, let's go in the room and summon a decoy. Right, so what's in the room? We have a chest. I bet there's 10 gold in that chest. What do you bet me? Jaffa cake. Bet you a Jaffa cake, there's 10 gold in the chest. Now, I've, I've got one movement left. What is the cultist doing? Oh, it's summoning another living bones. Yeah, I can go, I can go further. Okay, and then we're going to summon a decoy. Uh, yep. Summoning a decoy. Totally summoning a decoy. And we'll put it there. Because it's 2 XP. Why not? I don't think I'm going to level up to level 3 tonight. Maybe I will. It depends how much I play. This is it. I'm absolutely exhausted at the moment because I'm live streaming so much and I'm not getting much sleep. But I just... As I say, I just want to keep producing more content for people to watch at the moment. But yeah, <laughs> I need to rest at some point. Um, right, anyway, Cragheart. Well, he's only got one card in hand, so that will be a long rest then. Yeah, let's have a long rest. Let's leave the Tinkerer <laughs> on his own, in a room with lots of things. Is it flamethrower time? Is it flamethrower time? I think it might be flamethrower time. Yes. So we need to go early and do the flamethrower. Right, we're gonna do it. Oh, the cultist is going first. Is that gonna mess up all of my plans? It might. Yeah. Oh no, I can still get the flamethrower. So, I move two and heal one or all adjacent allies, which is nobody, because nobody's damaged. But I'm going to heal them anyway. So I'm going to light that. And then flamethrower time. So yes, it's that one and that one. So it's going to hit them both for three, wound them, get me two XP, and generate fire. Confirm targets. I want to see the graphics on this. Nice. Okay, so that's the cultist dead. Did I not hit the skeleton? Oh, the cultist blew up. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, I did kill the skeleton. Nice. Very, very nice. And what's in the chest? It's not 10 gold. I don't get a Jaffa cake. Well, it is 10 gold. Because it's a potion, which is worth 10 gold. So I'm still having a Jaffa cake. Don't burn out. No, I'll try not to burn out. I normally suffer burnout when there's the work and all the stress, whereas actually this is... I'm exhausted, but this is fun. And people are here watching. It's much better than me sat at home struggling with rulebook work and stuff. Um, right, so long resting time. What are we going to do? Are we going to throw away the massive boulder? Which I think we are at this stage. I don't think that's of any help to us. So, we've got two enemies left. We have a big bad uh, elite living corpse. And we also have this little living bones here. So, how is the Tinkerer going to deal with that? Well, we can go early and we can stun it and then just run away. And then we've got an ink bomb, which is quite nice. So, yeah, let's do the stun shot and run away a bit. Where's the loot? Oh, it's there. Uh, that ink bomb's going to get me an XP, but look at it. It's actually quite a good... It's attack 4, range 3. That's really good. That's really good. I think you just get rid of that. Okay, the crag heart. What are we going to do? Are we going to take take something each? I think we are. Just need to hit it big and heavy. So rumbling advance. That will move to there and generate nature. And then next round, I'll use that nature. So this round, I'm just going to hit it for three and push it away. So the living bones goes first and stands there again. 
puts its shields up and heals itself. Which is not bad for me, because it hasn't been damaged. Uh, Tinkerer. Do we move two first? Get out of the way. Oh, what is the corpse doing? Move one, attack three. So yeah, if I move two, get here, and then shoot it with the stun shot, it's not going to do anything. I love stunning the big things. Big things that do loads of damage, you just put a little stun on them and they can't do anything. Um, uh, oh, we've got some... Yeah, num uh, so questions in the chat from Marlon, but they're being answered by people in the chat. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Charlie, for, for answering the questions. Um, but, yeah, that number in the middle is very important. So, what are we going to do? We are going to do this first. Yeah, so we're going to move two to here. Deal a damage to it. Generate nature. And nature will be there for next turn. And then a heaving swing. Hit it for three, minus one, minus another one because it had a shield, but I am then going to push it away. Okay, turn over. Living corpse is stunned, so it doesn't do anything. Right, next round. So, um, yeah, basically Marlin. So what happens is each round you choose two cards. The first one you choose determines your initiative for that round, but you can then use the cards in any order. So, and it's your choice whether you want to go early or late. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, in this situation, we are close to the end of the scenario, so I, I'm not worried about running out of cards. In a full scenario in the board game, you run out of cards very easily, and my characters are hardly taking any damage. So, we're all fine here, we're all good, but I'm going to do the crater, but I want to go early. So I'm going to do that, and then Crater. So I'm going to go on Initiative 13. Meanwhile, the Tinkerer is going to use his Ink Bomb just to get some XP. Oh, that's Loki trying <laughs> scratching at the door because he can hear me inside. Um, yeah, so we'll do the Ink Bomb first, and then the Hook Gun to possibly loot or possibly run away. Okay. Uh, is the matter of getting XP the same, says Charlie? Yes, basically. When you play cards, you get XP. And if you complete, uh, not a particular scenario, but if you complete like a, a section of scenarios, that's when you get the, uh, the XP. Oh, so the Living Bones is standing there again. This Living Bones is obviously confused. It's just standing there and healing all the time. I'm going to play this just for the 2 XP. Um, it's a bit of a waste, but I can hear Loki scratching at the door. It wants to come in. Right, just bear with us a minute. I'm just going to let Loki in because he's he's scratching at the door. Again, just put the sound on because I quite like the sound of this game. Right, we're back. Um, where are you going? Where are you going? We need Loki cam. That's what we need. Loki is here, right here. Except now he's wandering off. Right, what we were doing? We were attacking, and we were using the nature to attack that and push it away. <gasps> Uh, where do we want to push it to? Let's push it over here. <laughs> okay, Craig Hart's turn done. <laughs> He's trying to climb up the radiator again. Just, just jump. You do this every time. Okay. 
So tinkerers go. So what you miss there is that um, yeah, the living corpse hit the decoy, which is fine. Right, ink bomb. Oh, nice. Never used that card before. Four damage. And then loot two. Is that going to do anything? It's not, is it? So I might actually just use that to move away. Although the decoy is in the way. Oh, the reason why I didn't take much damage is because the Cragheart put the shield two on, which is why they've got two shields next to them. Nice. Um, oh, Portuguese custard tarts. Yeah, Portuguese custard tarts are amazing. We, we got them when we went to Portugal last year, um, and we've had them a few times since. They are really nice. Really could do with one of those right now. If anybody would like to order me one and send it round for immediate delivery, that would be most appreciative. Appreciate it. Learn to talk, Paul. Right. I think we're done. Next round, round 13. This might be the last round. Let's see what we can do. Uh, we're still on full health, which is awesome. Mm, can we generate data? Tinkerer, Tinkerer. Can the Tinkerer generate nature? No, the Tinkerer needs to do a long rest. The tinkerer has no cards in hand. So yeah, we can. We can create two single hex obstacles next to us. It's fine. And then I can destroy one of those obstacles for an XP. Seems a bit silly, but yeah, let's do that. Just getting crazy now. Okay, so the Living Bones is moving, attacking one at two targets and healing itself. Except it's not moving. So it doesn't actually do anything and it heals up. This Living Bones is going to live forever. Oh, and Paul says he just ate the last one. Thank you. You should have sent me one, virtually. Sent me a picture of one earlier on. So, we are going to summon two obstacles near us. One there and one there. Which is allowed because I'm not cutting off an area. That generates nature, and then I'm going to destroy one of those obstacles because it gets me an XP. There we go, end the Craghart's turn. Living Corpse, what was it doing? It was taking a damage. Yes. Tinkerers go, and we are... Now, is any of this going to get me an XP? Yes, that is. So I'm keeping that one. I think I'm going to get rid of the hook gun. Although it is loot too. That's yeah, fine. We'll get rid of the hook gun. Right. Round 14. This is going to be the last round, he says. He says. Attack 2, range 5. Yeah, let's do that. That's the that's the crank card done, uh, and now the tinkerer. We want to get rid of the big one, and we want to do it in a way that's going to get us some XP. Um, which was this, wasn't it? Attack five at range two, but nothing's in range two. That's a bottom attack. Stamina booster gets me two XP. I could do that. What was my plan? I think I had a plan. I think it was a move back in. So I'll move back in and I will stun shot it this turn. Yeah, I'm the Tinker is going before the Living Corpse Elite, which is good. So we move two and heal one to all adjacent allies. Yeah, so we heal the decoy. And then we're gonna do a stun shot. This Tinker is awesome. Stun shot on that. Okay, my bless came out. Um, so it's down to one health anyway. Tinkerer's go is over. Living corpse's turn. Oh, it kills itself. Oh no, it was stunned. So it doesn't. <laughs> that backfired, didn't it? Um, right, we are going to do attack five, range one and immobilize. 
Not attack five, attack two, range five. Three damage, and then let's just move three and get some gold. Why not? Okay, I thought that was going to be the last round, but it wasn't. So the Craighart is going to have the long rest again, because we've no cards in hand. Again, you could short rest if I really wanted to. Oh, in fact, yeah. Yeah, because no, I don't need the benefits of a long... So we're not going to long rest. We're going to short rest. And yeah, we'll burn Dirt Tornado. We don't need that. So what are we going to do? We're rumbling in advance. And we will... Just do an attack three. Or Avalanche, attack four. Yeah, because that gets an XP. Uh, we'll aim for this to be the last round. Uh, and now we can do the Toxic Bolt. Uh, and also the, yeah, okay, totally going to be the last round. Look at the Living Bones again. Shield and heal again. And it's going first. Okay, so maybe it won't be the last round. <laughs> Just cars in to kill this thing. So we'll do this first. Attack five at range two. I mean, this is going to kill it. That's not dead. Uh, and then we do nothing with that one. Tinkerous turn is over. Craighart moves to, moves to here. Clip to clop, and then deals the damage to it. Smash, and then avalanche. There isn't any nature, so. It's just going to be attack three. <laughs> so close. So close. But at least I can get some more treasure. Um, so let's do the tinkerer first. What treasure is in here? There's two gold there. There's two gold there. Where's my loot card? If I do a short rest, I will get my loot card. Yeah. So short rest. Yes. I'm fine to lose that, because then I will do my... Oh no, I've already done it. I've already lost that card. That's what the line means. Oops. Never mind. Um, yeah, let's just move. Yep, yeah, okay. So we're going to get some gold, and then we're just going to hit it. Let's move two and then hit it. So we'll use that for a move, and that for an attack. Right, this should do it. This should be the last round. Decoy's still alive, wow. We'll go there and get some gold. And then we'll do nothing with the stun shot. And then the crag heart moves to onto the gold. And then does an attack three. And that's it. We are done. That is that scenario completed. Got some gold. So we did alright. It went on a bit longer than I thought, but it was a four-room dungeon. And I'm probably going to call it quits there tonight because it's late. My voice is getting a bit sore. I have one scenario left. So I haven't actually completed this particular run. I have one more to do, which will, I, which will be the Black Tomb. I might do this tomorrow morning, actually, if I get up early. It'll be either the Black Tomb or the Den of Razors. Might do the Den of Razors just because I'm getting a bit bored of Cultists and Living Bones. XP-wise, we are on 76 or 65. We've got 77 gold. So we're doing okay. Yeah, so that's where we're going to end it for tonight. So thank you very much to everybody for joining in the stream. I'm going to pop downstairs and get a bite to eat and go to bed, read some comics because I'm like that, and I will be back later on in the week with some more live streams if you either like... Uh, the Gloomhaven game, or um, or you want to see me playing some board games, I will be doing some board games as well. So yes, thank you for staying up, thank you for joining in uh, the stream, and I will see you all next time.
Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.